Hello everyone, welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. I hope you've all been doing well. Christmas is officially upon us and I am so excited. This vlog is going to be full of Christmas decorating, just all sorts really. I am really, really excited for this week. But just before we get into the video, I do just want to say a very quick thank you to today's sponsor, which is Glasses USA. You guys might know that I have actually worked with Glasses USA before, quite a few months back now, but ever since I did, I've been wearing those glasses that I received that time pretty much every single day, which is impressive. <laughs> So in case you don't know, because I don't typically tend to vlog just my normal working day, I do wear blue light glasses as I'm working because I'm just on screens constantly. My normal job is done from home online, my YouTube job is done obviously online, and then my university work is now online thanks to the pandemic. And I feel like a lot of you guys will be able to relate because of how this year has gone. So you can say what you want about you know, how helpful they actually are or whatever, but I have definitely found that they do at least help me and how tired my eyes feel. And you know, if you ever search online how you can help with eye strain, the only advice is to stop looking at screens as much. Wow, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> But yes, as I said, ever since I have been using blue light glasses, I have definitely noticed a difference. And so when Glasses USA reached out to ask if I would like to work with them again, I snapped up the opportunity. So I do have a few pairs of glasses to show you guys and you're probably going to laugh because you'll notice I have a very set look when it comes to glasses because the two pairs I chose are almost identical, but they are different, I promise. So first up, we have these ones, which I've been wearing today. Oh God, I'm opposite a window. This is not going to go well. There we go. You can actually kind of see my face. <laughs> so I am a big fan of the kind of frames where they only really have a frame on top. They do have this gold ridging, which I absolutely adore. I managed to work out what face shape I am and also what glasses would suit it. And one thing that definitely helps is that Glasses USA on the website, you can actually upload a selfie and it will basically try on virtually all of the glasses so you can just see what they look like actually on your face, which is so, so helpful, especially when you're buying online. And when you come to actually buy the glasses, you can basically personalize them however you want so that the lenses are your prescription and you don't have to go and get them, you know, readjusted in the actual opticians. You can get anti-scratch, UVA protection. As I've already mentioned, you can get blue light blocking lenses and just, it's really flexible. And I think that is just perfect when it comes to glasses. And they're really inexpensive as well, considering the prices that you would get at the opticians. So I am definitely a big fan of Glasses USA and I feel like it just makes them really personal. So I have these ones, which as I said, are almost identical, but are slightly different in shape and size. But I like these ones because you can see more of like my eyebrows and such. And they do sunglasses too, which clearly I'm not going to need anytime soon because middle of winter, but sunglasses, they exist and you can actually put prescription lenses in these two, which is brilliant. These arrived really quickly. They have free shipping. You can return them within 14 days, I think it is. So honestly, what's to lose if you want to give them a try? So just thought I'd mention that and thank you again to Glasses USA for very kindly sponsoring this video. So do go and check them out. I will leave a link to everything down in the description box. And anytime I do show my glasses in a vlog, I will leave links to them. But yes, with that being said and done, let's continue on with the usual programming and jump back to Monday. I'm excited because I have started decorating. But of course I'm bringing you along for it. I have only done the living room window so far which is just some lights purely because I am going to take my ring light down into the living room so that you guys can see me decorating properly but I didn't want to have the ring light on when the blind was wide open. <laughs> I've already done that ahead of time. I have one of my Christmas jumpers on. I have Christmas earrings in. I have Christmas music on and we're gonna put up Christmas decorations so let's do it. <laughs>
We're bringing back the sad looking mini Christmas tree. Look at the poor thing. <laughs> Hello, I know we're in my usual setup video style situation, but I've just filmed my November wrap up, so I figured I might as well just update the vlog while I'm here because it is currently Wednesday night. And yesterday I didn't vlog because, oh my goodness, was it a jam packed day. Yesterday I was just bouncing around between one job and another, so I quite literally went from doing my normal job. On my lunch break, I filmed a video, then I went back to work, then I had a uni class, then I went back to work again, then I had to edit the video that I just filmed and then I had a live show in the evening which that live show I had such a great time so myself and Becca from Back in the Books did a live show with KJ Sutton or Kelsey who is the author of Fortuna Swan. The third book in that series is actually out now by the time you're watching this which is so exciting or at least it is out on ebook. We are waiting a little bit longer for the paperbacks but yes it's out now and I'm very excited and I... <laughs> I'm going to talk about my reading crisis in a bit actually so hold that thought but I will leave a link to the live show down in the description box if you do want to go and watch it there wasn't any spoilers for any of the books so it's completely fine to watch it if you you know haven't started the series yet but yes it was a very intense day and I just could not find time to vlog any of it. <laughs> I am here now though and I again have just been working doing YouTube work on my lunch break and then did some more YouTube work or admin after work and now I've just filmed. I really wanted this week to be on the YouTube grind and I am to some extent but I thought I would be filming like back to back to back to back to back but there's actually quite a few videos which I need to, well I don't need to but it would be ideal if I could wait until the weekend to film them but I keep pushing things towards the weekend because the weekend would be a great time to do them and it's to the point now where I'm like the weekend is only so long you need to stop doing this but I do want to try and film I think three different videos if not more at the weekend, edit as many of them as possible but it is also a polathon at the weekend so I am also aiming to read two different books but one of the books that I am going to read on the weekend will hopefully go towards a video that I was going to film tonight so it's all just been one big faff. I do also need to sort out presents and there's quite a lot of artsy stuff I need to do at the weekend which I don't usually do but I do need to do that. I also need to if possible, get my Patreon prints labeled so that I can ship them off as soon as possible. So there's a lot of things that I'm wanting to do. Don't know how many of them I will actually be able to do, but I suppose we'll find out as this week progresses. And then in terms of reading, I don't have any reading updates because the crisis I'm currently having is that I was planning to return to The Mask Falling because you guys will know that once uni started, I just kind of had to abandon that halfway through, which just... <laughs> it broke my heart. But then as well I received Deadly Dreams which is the third Fortuna Swan book and that's one of my most anticipated reads as well so I did start reading that but only one chapter. Now I just don't really know what to read because I have two books that I'm going to be reading at the weekend very specifically for Polathon so I don't want to start either of those yet but then there's nothing I can finish within the three days before that because I don't think I'll be able to read other books at the weekend with everything else that I'm going to do so I'm just like what do I fit in this in-between stage because I think if I were to read The Mask Falling maybe I could finish that before then? I don't know. But I really liked the idea of reading both The Mask Falling and Deadly Dreams in one week and basically just having one massive crisis <laughs> because I would be reading two of my most anticipated releases ever just in a week and I think I would actually just be a ball of emotion which I think would be hilarious so but I can't read both of them and have them done 
before the weekend so I don't know whether I'm actually going to push that back until next week and read both of them then or do I just carry on with the mask falling and hope for the best. I've been having this debate with myself literally all week and it's Wednesday and I still haven't made a decision so. So it is currently 9pm. I'm going to go on and cozy up. Probably scroll on my phone for a bit because let's be real. <laughs> Popping on in with just a quick update. It's Friday evening and Polathon has begun and it's been snowing today, which is just perfect timing. And I have actually started a book for Polathon right on the stroke of midnight, which made me feel very accomplished because I started listening to the audiobook of A Shiver of Snow and Sky by Lisa Ledeck. This one, as far as I can tell, I did used to want to read this a very long time ago and just never really got around to it, so I can't remember too clearly what the plot is about, but I believe it's set in a world where the sky changes colour depending on the state of that area. So at the start of this book, the sky turns red, signalling danger, and every time this happens, there's a big wipeout of the community and like hundreds of people die. So this happens at the start of this book. Obviously they don't know what's going to happen besides everybody dying, so they're just kind of waiting to see what happens because there's nothing they can do about it and I'm really intrigued about it. One thing I did not expect at all is the writing style. This is really lovely to listen to because it just uses words that you wouldn't usually use within just everyday conversation. So it makes it kind of flowery but not overly so, like it's still perfectly understandable, it's not a slog to listen to and it still feels natural which is what makes it really interesting and I'm just really enjoying listening to it so far. I think I'm seven chapters in and I'm going to listen to more of it tomorrow. I think there's quite a few things I need to do, like hands-on stuff which doesn't really need my brain too hard so I think I'm going to listen while I do those. And then this evening I'm actually going to start reading the Raven and the Reindeer by T. Kingfisher, which is the Mythic book of the month. For November and December, it is a retelling of the Snow Queen, and it's only about 200 pages. You can get it on script as an ebook, which is what I'm going to be doing, and I'm just so excited for this. I've been meaning to read something from this author for such a long time, and it fits perfectly with Polathon, so I'm excited to start reading that one, but first of all, I'm going to go and jump in the bath and just have a little bit of a pamper evening, I think. <laughs> I'm also going to see if I can find my polar bear pajamas because it's, it's polathon and why not? <laughs> Hello, it is now Sunday night. Polathon has ended because we've gone past the stroke of midnight and I did manage to finish reading The Raven and the Reindeer by T. Kingfisher. I absolutely adored it. I rated it 4.5 out of 5 stars. This is the first book in a very very long time that has made me laugh out loud. There's the sarcastic humour running all the way through from one of the characters which I absolutely loved reading and it almost jokes around with itself in the like ridiculousness of fairy tales and just kind of acknowledging that yes this is beyond strange <laughs> and I just really enjoyed seeing that and there were small moments as well which were really nice to see. For instance, in the beginning, the main character tries to be like, I'm not like other girls, and her grandmother's just like, yes, you are. 
<laughs> and completely calls her out for that attitude. And even though this is a pretty much direct retelling, like there are a couple of changes, but it does follow the story of the Snow Queen. There were changes made which I actually really liked. For instance, there is a female-female relationship in there, which I wasn't expecting, but that was a nice addition to the story. And just how everything ends, I feel like is in a good enough place to feel like a fairy tale, but also not too convenient in terms of how we started and where it could have ended up. As with most really short stories, I actually would have preferred this to be longer because I do think that the entire resolution happened really quickly. I do like how it was solved because it takes one of my favorite themes in a book and uses that to its full potential, but I can't tell you what because spoilers. It did seem like the solution came around a little bit too quickly though, considering the journey, but this is very much a story of the journey and even the original fairy tale is. I also enjoyed this focus on how the main character was very distinctly not magical. Like she could experience magic and use magic if it was like placed on her, but she wasn't. She was just a normal girl and the only real thing getting her through was just sheer willpower and determination and loyalty. And I feel like it was really nice to see that within a story because we read so many stories of like the chosen one and the people who are special for whatever reason, whereas this book is just like, no, you are completely normal, completely and utterly normal. You're just going through really strange things. <laughs> so yes, I really did enjoy this one. As I said, 4.5 out of five stars. The only reason why I didn't rate it the full five stars is because there were certain sentences that made me question the intention behind them. But it's one of those things where I was like, I can't tell how to read this. Like I don't, and like, why is it there? <laughs> and it would only be the odd comment here and there, but I'm kind of like, I don't know what to make of this. So that made me hesitant to be like, this is amazing, but. Other than that, it is a generally really magical fairy tale-esque book. It really does pull through on the fairy tale elements and would be perfect to read round about now. So I would highly, highly recommend reading this around the Christmas time if you're looking for something wintry to read. And I don't think I updated you any further on A Shiver of Snow and Sky. I'm now 26 chapters in. <laughs> I really am going to do better at updating throughout the progress of the book because I keep doing the thing where I'm like, I started this book and then I come back at the end of the week saying I finished this book whereas I want to actually do thorough updates of like my thoughts as I'm progressing through but A Sugar Snow and Sky I am still in progress I didn't manage to finish that for Polathon. I did at least manage to finish The Raven and the Reindeer though which I'm taking as a win because that's probably the most successful I've been at Polathon so far. <laughs> And I am a good part of the way into A Shiver of Snow and Sky. If I wasn't so busy today, I definitely could have finished it, but I shall try and finish it maybe tomorrow. It depends the next time I'm doing something that I can listen along to an audiobook with. But for that one, again, I'm really enjoying it. I find it really interesting because the plot very distinctly has two separate problems. You are just swapping between these different perspectives and the problems. And obviously you know they're going to come together at some point, but I'm intrigued to see how that happens. I will say, we follow a boy and a girl and the boy is, I don't know how to explain it, he basically just keeps jumping to the worst possible conclusion and I actually feel like he shouldn't do that in terms of what their situation is because the girl's gone off and done a thing by herself. It doesn't take him too long and this keeps happening in a cycle. It doesn't take him too long to just completely convince himself that she's dead and I'm like, why? <laughs> Like he goes from having complete full faith and he's just like, if anybody can do this, it's her. Obviously he's going to be concerned, but then within a few sentences, he's just like, nope, she's dead. She's gone, that's it, I'm gone. Why, 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 why did you just convince yourself? And like, I do understand that that would be the process. It is just because it keeps happening so quickly and I'm like, nothing triggered that train of thought. So that does kind of feel like it's only there to serve as a reminder that this journey she's gone on is dangerous as if we don't already know that. But I am really enjoying reading both of their journeys and like what they're dealing with. They're both really interesting in terms of what they're encompassing and what they're having to do. It's a lot more brutal than I imagined. We have suicide warnings and also like mutilation. I guess that's what you'd call it. I don't know. I will put, as always, content warnings down in the description box underneath the links for the books. But yes, it's going in a direction that I do find really interesting. I'm intrigued to see 
where it goes for the rest of the book because where I've finished on at the minute or where I've paused for a moment at least, the girl is in a really weird place. <laughs> like something really strange has just happened and I'm like, where are we going to go from here? So I am intrigued to find out. It's a really easy book to fall into and I am really quite glad that I picked it up because I just completely convinced myself quite a few years ago that I wasn't actually that interested in it. So I'm glad I gave it a go. And I'm very intrigued to see where we end because this, I believe, has sequels or at least a sequel. And even now, I can't imagine why. Like it, it feels like it can be its own encompassing story, but also I don't have too much left. I guess it might cut off before the point that I'm imagining it ends at. I don't know, but I will find out soon. Also really enjoying that one. The reading has been going well this week or as well as it could have done after all of my indecisiveness towards the beginning of the week where I just couldn't figure out what to read before Polathon and ended up reading nothing. <laughs> In this upcoming week, I should be reading two of my most anticipated books ever. So this is going to be intense in the next vlog. <laughs> Hopefully I do manage to actually like read them both fully in that vlog because I will be doing a lot of video stuff, but aren't I always? But I will have had my last university class of 2020 so I do get a little bit of a break from that huge tome of a book that I've been reading once Tuesday has passed. So that's exciting, but I'm getting ahead of myself now and talking about next week. There's not really been too much else for me to update on over the weekend. I've just been doing video stuff. <laughs> I have been doing some artsy stuff and I really wish I could have filmed that, but it's related to somebody's Christmas present and said person might see it. So sadly I couldn't film that, but I did spend a couple of hours doing some artsy stuff while listening to the audiobook. I was up until a ridiculous time last night. It was like 4 a.m. or something. I don't know what's going on with my sleeping pattern, but we're not sleeping at the minute, apparently. So I ended up doing some Patreon stuff, just general admin, scheduling stuff for Mythtake because we do a thing every Tuesday called Retail Tuesday, where we basically share a retailing recommendation or a retailing that's on our radar. So every Tuesday you will see us posting, myself and Charlotte alternate between the Tuesdays. And yeah, it just means that we have all the chats about retailings all the time. So <laughs> I scheduled a couple of mine in just to make sure that they would go up, even if I forgot, because I forgot this week. <laughs> but otherwise there hasn't been anything like, overly dramatic to update you on. So yeah, I think I will be wrapping up this vlog here. Just before we do end, I did just want to quickly mention that I have been receiving parcels throughout the week, but I will be saving them for Christmas. So if you have sent me something and it says it was delivered, it probably was, <laughs> just to assure you that it has arrived. And also once again, a massive thank you to Glasses USA for sponsoring this video. As I said, all of the links and such will be down in the description box. So do be sure to go and check them out because you're bound to find something that you like if you're on the hunt for new glasses. So with that being said, I will leave you to the rest of your day. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to leave a like and a comment so let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing so. Down in the description box, you'll find links to everything I've mentioned in this video, all of my social media and other bookish stuff as well. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now, I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye.